Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again today. I'm out in my local woods and uh, it looks like it's going to rain so I've got my cover over. Uh, Hurricane Nate is passing to the west of Florida and it's brought in all this kind of real muggy tropical air. So that's why it looks like I'm sweating like it's the middle of July. But uh, I came out here to brave all this and the rain and all that to show you this mess kit. This is the Hungarian Army Mess Kit. So let me uh, get the camera set up and I'll show you some close-ups. Okay, so here it is up close. Give you a little look at it here. It is very similar to the earlier Polish uh, Army 2331 Mess Kit because of this recess. It makes It does look very similar to it and I think that's why it gets mixed up. As a matter of fact, when I bought this, it was labeled as a Polish mess kit at my local surplus. Uh, it has four rivets holding the pot or the uh, cup handle on, okay? Um, has a slot here and a bracket here for a belt to pass through where they would put a belt around it to hold the whole kit together. Um, one thing to note about this I found that the ones that are newer, uh, 1965, uh, the M1965, it ha it doesn't have this welded bracket. It has a um, like a sort of like a wire, almost like a D ring, but it's it floats on here. Uh, it's it's different from this one how it's welded onto the uh, actual arm. So at this time, I'm going to put a couple pictures. Of some of two of the mess kits I'm talking about on the screen now. From my local surplus. Okay, so um, some other things. Uh, the bail handle here has a bracket that's very similar to the uh, the original German M31 mess kit from World War II, uh, the early models. It's very similar. Looks almost the same. Okay, um, what else can I tell you? This one is dated, I think, 1953. Uh, you won't be able to see it on camera, but uh, right here, it's very difficult to see, but that little box here, it's it's split up into three different sections. The top part has a six. The middle right there has an HR. And then below that it says 953. Okay, and it's it's stamped on the cup. And it's also stamped on the pot here underneath the handle. I hope you can see that right there. And going off of that, I haven't found a lot of information, but I think that this is a 1953 judging by the other mess kit examples I saw at my local surplus that were dated different dates that 53 was different numbers um, I went through he had a whole bunch of these including the one with the little floating handle there so he had a lot of those with the little um, wire piece there instead of welded and I found a, a couple of these and I picked the best one out okay um, uh, let's see what else can I tell you about it. Uh, it it weighs one pound 2.4 ounces. Let me flip it over here and get you a different view. One pound 2.4 ounces or 523 grams. That's what the whole kit weighs. Okay. Um, the cup here. Take this off. And inside of here, I got stuff that I'm gonna cook today for you with it. So I'll have to take all that out. But the cup. It's very similar to all the other post-World uh, War II German mess kits. Okay, so if we fill this cup all the way to the very top, it holds three cups, or 700 milliliters, right to the rim. Okay, and if we take this pot, let me dump all this stuff out over here so you can get a, a good look at that. This pot, if we fill it all the way to the rim, it holds six cups, or 1,500 milliliters. Okay, so uh, another thing I like to do, if you've seen any of my other, uh, my other video I have, 
identifying post-World War II German mess kits. I'll put a, a link to that in the description and a little thing at, at the end of this video so you can click on it and see it. But what I did with those is I measure with a micrometer, or one inch, a zero to one inch micrometer right in here. I found the straightest piece of metal I could and I measured the thickness of, of all those different mess kits. And this one is 55 thousandths or 0 0.055 inches. That's the thickness of this pot measured right here. Now, one thing I have to say here is uh, most, most other kits I've seen are just, well, all of them actually. This is the first one I've seen that is not, that is painted right here. Usually they put the cup on it and paint it all together and this part comes out shiny. But for some reason, this kit is painted from top to bottom, okay? So it's, I don't know how they kept it from getting inside. Maybe they painted it upside down or something. But that, this is the only one. So that, that thickness may be off just a hair because of the thickness of this paint on the pot. So it, it came out to 0 .055. And how, how does that compare to other post-war German mess kits? Well, the closest one is the Polish 2331. And it was 45 thousandths. That's what I measured on the model I have. And so it's it's bigger than the, the 2331, but it's not as thick as the Swedish aluminum mess kit that I have. Its thickness is a whopping 0.068 inches or 68 thousandths. Okay, so um, just some numbers for you. I don't know when they began this run of the mess kits with this welded handle, but I found on, on the internet, and I'll put a link to it, to its, his channel or his blog he has m65 is what he's calling the mess kits like i pictured with my pictures just a minute ago that have the different handle here okay uh, so that's about it uh it's, it's a pretty much you know it's a really robust made kit one other thing i discovered you know how most of these kits you can fold the handle down one side it stays up to keep it out of the fire. You're supposed to be able to rotate it all the way around and fold it under. This one doesn't quite do that. So I don't, that's not a deal stopper for me. I can pack it with the handle straight up like this. But uh, most of these kits I have, I have, or all of them actually, except for this one, they, the handle at least folds underneath and then goes around the other way and stays up out of the fire like this. So this one's a little bit different. So let me set up... Um, well, I'm gonna be cooking. Give you a little bit of a cooking demonstration with this with this mess kit. Okay, so for today we're gonna to be using a Trangia stove, alcohol stove, because I don't want to ruin the finish on this pot. As many of you know that watch my video or subscribers, you know that I collect these. I have many different mess kits, and this one will probably get used once or twice and become a shelf queen so I don't want to ruin this finish that it has on it with the paint from when I bought it so what I like to do is have dual use or backups and one of them is with this wood stove here okay um, if my alcohol ran out I could still use the wood stove as a backup so you might be asking well how's that gonna work because if I put this Trangia in there the gapping is going to be a lot between the actual stove and our pot there. Well, what I have is this can. I think some kind of nuts came in it or pecans or something. And it is spaced just right that when I put it inside this Lixata wood stove, okay, and then put the Trangia on top of it, it gives us about an inch between the top of this wood stove and the top of the alcohol stove so that's pretty optimal for cooking okay so let me uh, get the fire going and i'll show you what's next okay so here i have some uh, some turkey spam that i'm going to cut up and let me go in i, have, I brought my uh, my usgi mess kit this is the case for it I'm going to use this to um, to cut on. So I forgot to bring something. And don't worry, I'm not going to uh, 
ruin my knife. I'm going to use my my little mess kit knife that I have. It's not it's not sharp anyway, so it's not going to bother. So what we're making is a, a, a type of breakfast burrito, and so I'm just kind of um, using what I had in my cupboard. Okay, so a lot of times those are the best meals. They're the most fun because I don't have to plan and think about it. I just went to my cupboard and and um, just looked what I had. <laughs> We're gonna cut this up now. Let me um, let me get my alcohol stove going. I forgot to light it. Okay, it's already going. And I'm going to take a little bit of, I like to carry my uh, oil in one of these flasks because I found it does not leak. <laughs> I hate when they leak in your pack, make a big mess. Put a little bit of olive oil in here. Okay. See it's in there. I'm going to move it around here and kind of coat the bottom of the pot really well. up on here and break some of this turkey spam down in here so we're just kind of making this as we go kind of break this up some here we go you guys can see now this alcohol stove is going to get hot pretty fast. I'm going to go ahead and cut this other one up too. This other uh, slice of spam. Might as well just cook it all, right? <laughs> I got a nice little GSI plastic spatula, which makes makes good for this right here. Perfect little size for putting in your pack for hiking. I know this is for what I'm doing. I haven't really told you what I'm doing yet, but for what I'm doing, I think this is too much meat. But we'll go with it anyways. Okay. I might end up putting the simmering on. So the other things I've got here, this is some onion and yellow pepper, yellow bell pepper. We're going to throw in here next in just a minute. And I've got some cheese. All right, and then uh, in here, a couple of eggs. Now my wife got this for me. I never knew that they made these in a two shot. The ones I have hold a whole dozen of eggs or a half a dozen. I think it's a whole dozen. And uh, I've never seen where they just did two. And this is perfect for taking eggs on the trail. I used to worry about them breaking when I was hiking out here for the day. So that's a nice gift from my wife. Let's give this another little stir. Okay, starting to stick. So what we're going to do, sorry for bumping the camera, we're going to put this simmer ring on. Okay, I'm going to set it about like this maybe. See if we can get it on there without burning ourselves. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's still lit. Awesome. Okay, that's going to cut down the fire so I don't need that quite that much heat. I don't want it sticking, not the whole, the whole thing sticking inside there. 
Okay, so let's let that get caught up. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions and peppers. That may have cut down the simmer too much. In which case I'm gonna have to open it back up again. And there we go. I don't hear it sizzling anymore. Let's take that back off. I think I, I, think I put it out. Let's open it up right, right that. Oh, it's still going. <laughs> Surprised me. Yeah, it's still going. So let's put our food back on there. That should be just about right. Okay, so I'll come back to you when we're when this is all sauteed up. Okay, so let's take a look at this. It looks pretty good to go to the next step. Sauteed pretty good. Turning down the heat is the key. I don't know how those uh, Swedish soldiers cooked anything, you know, without it sticking with that uh, regular large Trangia because um, it didn't have a simmer ring on it. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is attempt to put some egg in there. I'm just gonna put it right in and let it cook, so. Okay. And the heat should be just about right. There we go. All right, so let's get a shot here. Okay, so, so it's going to take a minute for it to um, heat back up because I'd, I'd rather it be like this so, and take a little bit than heat too fast and stick. So I'll bring you right back when it's almost done. Okay, so let's take a look. See what we got now. Oh, yeah. Looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take this off because it's going to continue to cook a little bit. There's a couple more things I want to do before we eat this. Okay, so what I want to do now is make a little coffee. It's gotten to evening now, and so it's not quite as hot, and I could go for some coffee. So, whoa, did you see that? <laughs> So uh, let's get some water out over here out of my bag. This is the Czechoslovakian M60 canteen right here that I'm carrying. Man, that thing's blazing now. Get it out of the strap here. And pour some water. I'll do it. Okay, let's get this 
up on here. This thing is smoking. And so I'm just going to boil this water now and um, make it some instant coffee. I don't like instant coffee all the time, but it sure is good and convenient out here when you don't have to carry a bunch of extra stuff. Okay, so there's one other thing I want to do here. I'll wipe this pan out here. Okay, and let's take this. We're about to turn that down. Oops, got hung on my, got hung on my, uh, there we go. There, that slows it down enough right there. What I want to do is, is warm my flour tortillas up and brown them a little bit. So this works really good for that. Just set them in there like that. And we're gonna put them on this plate. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, put them down in here. A little bit crispy, that that'll be good. Okay, because the fire, the little alcohol stove fire was a little hot. So let me get this thing off of here. See about if I can close this vent here. Get it back up there, put that fire out. Oops. Let's take your take my O-ring out. I didn't quite put it out. You can still see a flame coming out of that little vent hole. Okay, and that should do it. So now what we're gonna do is is take my spoon here. Move this right here so you can see better. And our egg, spam, onion, and pepper mixture. Put it into our little taco shells. So they're not really burritos, I guess, because we're using taco shells, but you get the idea. Okay, 
it's still warm from um because i kept it covered and we're going to take some of this shredded cheese which is a monterey jack blend type cheese i'll put that on top okay then the last two things is some mcdonald's picante sauce i had left over from some breakfast burritos yeah that's right that's where i got this idea from and the turkey spam actually i uh, saw floor boy survival i forget floor boy bushcraft and survival i think that's the name of his channel now he was cooking with some turkey spam and uh it made me remember about it and i bought some last time we went to the store so there we go some picante sauce and then here is some hot sauce i think i got this from chick-fil-a i think some leftover put a little bit of hot sauce in there and there you have it breakfast burritos with turkey spam onion yellow green pepper cheese egg Hot sauce and bikani sauce. Nice. So there you have it. There's your review on the Hungarian Army mess kit. The pot and the cup. It's a really nice piece of kit. Uh, like I said, it's, it's actually thicker than um, most mess kits out there, post-World War II mess kits like this style. Um, I noticed that there's a lot of them on sale now, uh, like different websites, they're carrying these. I guess they, they re released a bunch of them at one time. So uh, I hope that helps you make your decision uh, as to which mess kit you would like to buy and maybe help you identify which one you have. So it looks like it's not going to rain now, so I'm, I'm glad for that, but uh, I'm glad you came along with me. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. If, if you liked what you've seen, please click subscribe on my channel and follow me. I do all kinds of reviews on mess kits like this and, and different equipment. I uh, also do a little bit of kayak fishing every once in a while and, and camping, regular car camping and things like that. And uh, if you like this video, also click like. I really appreciate seeing those uh, those likes. It helps uh, helps me to know that I'm, what I'm doing everybody likes and, and to keep doing it. And um, also, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them about this mess kit. Right at this time when I videoed this, I don't have a lot of information about this. The stuff I found is in different language, and I haven't had time to translate it. But every comment that you guys put, I try to answer them. Every once in a while, one slips past me. Uh, uh, YouTube may not notify me, or I miss it somehow. But I really try my best, so leave me a comment at the bottom, and I will answer that and try to try to uh, answer your question to the best of my ability. So, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.